Hi, this is John from MySolarHome.us. I'm a solar professional. I've been in solar since 2013 and we've been doing solar and storage now for the last year and a half. I hope you've seen the other videos on my channel, but this one is brand new. And this is about the new Tesla Powerwall Plus. That's the new Tesla Power, Powerwall Plus battery that they have just launched. The specifications are still not fully out. So I'm going to be comparing the Powerwall Plus with the Generac PowerCell. So some of the specifications may not be as what Tesla finally comes out with. If you're watching this video who's thinking about batteries, if you already have solar panels, then the Tesla Powerwall Plus and, and neither is the Generac PowerCell are those two batteries for you. The Generac PowerCell as well as the new Tesla Powerwall Plus, they're both DC coupled. What that means is you have to buy the solar panels and the batteries together. You cannot add batteries to an existing solar system. If you already have solar panels, the options you have with you are the, the old Tesla Powerwall. There is a company called Electric, which makes wonderful batteries called the PowerPods. You have LG Chem and you have Panasonic batteries. And then there are smaller manufacturers like Impericon who are doing good work too. But this video is going to be comparing the Powerwall Plus, the new Tesla Powerwall Plus with the Generac PowerCell. We're going to look at how much power these two produce, how much energy they have, what kind of loads they can support, specialized features like generator connectivity, how much time they take install. Installation is becoming a big challenge today. Load management, using soft starts so that you can use larger air conditioning units, hot water heater, the possibility of using these with your batteries, pair them on the aesthetic. So let's get started. Let's look at the energy of the power cell versus the Tesla Powerwall Plus. The Tesla Powerwall Plus pretty much comes in one single size, 13 and a half kilowatt hours of usable power uh, energy cap capacity. The power cell on the other hand is modular. As you can see, there it, you can fit a maximum of six battery units inside the casing of the power cell. Each is three kilowatt hours. Their base size is three units of battery. So that's nine k kilowatt hours. You can increase it to 12, 15 or 18. So the power wall's energy capacity, uh, flexibility also it's really easy for you to buy batteries later. You might buy a nine kWh unit right now and then add three more batteries at your leisure later. And you can do it yourself too. It's pretty easy to do. The Tesla, everything is integrated. You can't touch it. And if you want an increase in capacity, you'll have to buy one more unit. You'll double it to 27. So on this one, I give it to the power cell. It's more flexible, got more easier sizers. The Generac power cell scores over the Tesla Powerwall Plus on the energy. Now, how much can these batteries power? Let's look at the power for these two units now. The Generac outputs 9,000 watts on a continuous basis, and this is for the 18 kWh unit. The Tesla Powerwall does 7,600 on a continuous basis. What this means is that you can run any device or anything in your household which consumes up to 9,000 watts continuously at one time, which pretty much gives you almost everything in your home. Unless you've got really large motors, you can run your air conditioning, you can run your, um, your hot water heater. The other rating that we look at is the power surge. As you can see, the power surge for the power cell is 11,200 watts and it's 9,600 watts for the Tesla. The power surge is important. If you want to start, if you want to use loads like air conditioners, if, if, you're, if you're in a rural area and you use pumps, then the power surge is important because to get those pumps or the AC started, you need an inrush of power. And that needs, that's usually a, a multiple of what they, that they require uh, compared to regular running. So the max power surge that this power cell can generate is 11,200 watts, which pretty much takes care of, of almost anything you can throw at it on, uh, in terms of uh, a home load. The Tesla Power Plus is at 9,600. So both of them are pretty well matched. But again, the, the, Generac's, uh, the Generac scores because it's got a higher rating in terms of a power surge. Both Generac and Tesla have incorporated soft starts into their portfolio. What the soft start does is it eliminates the need of that power surge. Your batteries can thus power larger roads. So both of them have got large power surge capacities and they have soft start capabilities. In terms of aesthetics, pretty much the Tesla Powerwall scores over the uh, 
uh, the Generac, the solar panels, both these options, the Tesla Powerwall Plus and the Generac PowerCell are a combo deal now. You have to buy them battery along with solar panels. You just can't buy the battery on its own. In terms of aesthetics, the the Powerwall Plus is clearly the winner. You can see the looks, even the solar panels, even the way the solar panels are installed in your roof, they use a set, they use um, they use a special racking system known as a SEP, gives them a lower clearance from the roof, and they've got nice and the sides are all covered by a nice frame. They look they merge into your roof nicely. The looks on the looks front, clearly the Tesla solar panels as well as the Tesla battery score over the Generac. Not that the Generac is shabby, but clearly. Tesla is, is 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 way ahead in terms of looks, but looks is not everything, right? Okay. The next we have is since both both these guys come with solar panels as a package, you have to look at what kind of inverter is included in the package. The power cell has optimizers included in the package, which is great. That means they've got every three or four panels, uh, up to every six panels will have a single optimizer associated with it. So if you have 24 panels, you'll have you'll have four optimizers with the with the Generac power cell. Whereas the Tesla Powerwall, they only work with a string inverter. So there's no there's no optimization going on. What this does is that the that the Generac solar panels are likely to be more efficient and produce more power. When you have situations where you have shade on your panels or you have clouds, the Generac solar panels will tend to produce more power because they've got optimizations thanks to their optimizers. Tesla, Powerwall Plus, their solar panels do not have the optimizers. They, they'll use a single inverter and that's that nice little box on top of the solar on, on top of the Tesla battery that you see. Everything is included there. It's a single inverter. As a result, if you're looking at larger size of solar panels, more than 9kW and you'll need a second inverter adding to your cost. The Generac has slightly higher capacity than the Tesla in terms of the amount of solar panels that you can attach to the Generac battery. So on the inverter because of the optimizer versus the string architecture as well as the slightly larger size of solar panels that you can attach to the Generac, the power cell wins. Now something which it becomes very important as a battery user is if you have a long power outage, your battery is going to run out of juice of energy. So you got to conserve energy. If you just have one battery, it makes good sense to plan your usage. With the Generac as well as with the Tesla, they have introduced a new features known as load shedding where you can plan to prioritize your loads. So your heavy energy consumption loads like your AC or your water heater or a well pump, the larger loads can be controlled to only run when the battery charge is above a certain level. If it goes below, let's say 50% and this is programmable in both of them, the battery will, the, the these circuits will automatically be switched off and you will not be able to run those large power consuming loads. For example, if you had a bad day and there was not too much of sun and your solar panels did not really charge up your battery for that day, it makes sense on that day not to run your AC or your hot water heater using your batteries. Both of these have the capability to do load shedding. PowerCell does it using a hardware item known as by putting a hardware unit in front of each large load known as an SMM. Tesla Powerwall Plus is likely to be a software solution. Since they both have it, I give this one to the Tesla Powerwall Plus because the software solutions are usually more flexible and will give you more capability to control. In terms of generator support, both of them have it and this is extremely important. If you have a power outage during the winter when there's no sun, it makes sense to have a generator. You run it in the day for a few hours, charge the battery and then you're good for the rest of the day as well as for the night. All of us know how difficult it is to sleep at night if your generator is running or if your neighbor is running a generator. All those problems go away with both the power cell as well as the Tesla. So on that one, there's no clear winner since they both have that capability right now. The only thing caveat would be I know Gen Generac has it right now and the Powerwall Plus says they're going to have it but sometimes the future comes a little later even though it's been announced. Next we look at the price. Now on price Tesla is killing it. Tesla Tesla's pricing would be a good 20% lower than the Generac pricing but then you got to weigh up you got to weigh the benefits of the Generac versus the Tesla and decide whether you want to pay a little extra because you have optimizers in your solar panels. You have more flexibility in terms of the energy capacity. You have more power availability because the continuous and the power surge capacities are more than the Tesla Powerwall Plus. Of course, you don't have the, the great looks of the Tesla and some of the software capabilities of the Tesla are likely to be more than the Generac. So overall, the Tesla Powerwall does win on the price front. And finally, the one which is the biggest as of 
as on date when we are making this video is available. Tesla is taking forever to install. People who have bought the Tesla Powerwall or the Powerwall Plus have passed orders, they still don't have the battery. They are taking six, seven, eight months to install. What's the use of having a battery you, you, you can't get installed? On this one, the power cell wins hands down. They take about three to four months to install. Just on the basis of availability, I would make the power cell a winner because how do you compete against the battery which is not available? So that in a nutshell is, uh, so if you look at all of them together right now, as you can see, the power cell scores on energy, on power, on power surge, on the solar panels and the inverters, and sc scores on the time to install, whereas the Tesla Powerwall scores on aesthetics, it scores on the software capabilities, and scores on create pricing. So overall, I'll say right now, if you're thinking of taking up a battery, go for the Generac solution. If you already have solar panels, then neither of these will work for you. Look for other solutions. N-Phase is great. Um, the electric power pod is another really good choice for you. I hope you like this video. Do like and subscribe. And I'll be putting on more videos soon. And there are a couple more videos on my channel on other battery options like the electric power pod, which you might like. Have a great day.